Joe Bastardi has a reputation for speaking his mind. He's a former wrestler and a champion bodybuilder. There's a desperation in wrestling that if you could keep it in other things and you understand that um, all this preparation, all these hours, and it, uh, all come down to one or two minutes, it's like the forecast. All that preparation comes down to one forecast, except you do it every single day, just every single day. Hi, AccuWeather.com meteorologist Joe Bastardi, and uh, a lot of lots being made over the uh, oil spill in the upcoming harvest. As a senior meteorologist at AccuWeather, one of the world's largest online forecasters, Joe Bastardi's weather predictions are seen by millions. Well, AccuWeather uh, has 2.7 million forecast sites that we actually forecast for. So we reach people all over the world, all right? The people that see me on TV or they see me on the videos, that's just the tip of the iceberg as far as what I do. You go to that blog and you can read this for yourself. This massive audience gets a daily dose of Bastardi's outspoken view, that there's no such thing as man-made global warming. Now we know the earth is supposed to be burning up, okay? How can we dance if the earth is burning? Remember that song? I, I, was, I guess uh, it was a band that did that years ago. Don't ask me why that just came into my mind. Things come into my mind, they come out my mouth, and sometimes I can't help it. Among his meteorologist colleagues, this climate change skeptic is not alone. I'm AccuWeather.com's Kate Bilo here with your latest European forecast, and let's take a look at what's happening across the continent. According to the largest survey of U.S. weather forecasters, only half of the men and women paid to predict the weather believe global warming is happening. At George Mason University in Virginia, Ed Myback is the director of the Climate Centre which conducted the survey. 55% of our respondents believe in climate change. Um, about 25% don't, and about 20% haven't yet made up their mind. So What's more, 25% of those surveyed went so far as to describe global warming as a scam. The fact that the quarter who don't believe are almost entirely people without conservative political ideology tells me that this, is, this has something to do with the fact that we've allowed this to become a political issue as opposed to a, science, a scientific issue. Myback says forecasters play an important role in influencing opinion about climate change. The second most trusted group of professionals with regard to information about global warming is television weathercasters. Um, and 75% of Americans watch the local television news at least a few times a week. And the number one, their number one motivation, their number one reason for doing so is to learn about the weather. Here's where the temperature is going. Now, this coincides with what I've been yelling and screaming about, the reversal that is taking place. They say, well, Joe, here it goes up again. There we go, woo, up like that. Well, guess what? As soon as this PDO changes completely, and it is beginning to change, you're going to see it flatten back off again. And you all know by now where my projections are over the next 20 to 30 years. But what people... You're not just giving forecasts. You're giving commentary. You're talking to people about the weather, though, aren't you? It's, I mean, well, I am because I'm trying to explain why I put out the forecast I do. And I always enc encourage people that listen to me to go look for themselves. I even challenge them, don't believe me. Simply go look at all sides of the issue, especially with the climate debate. More local, more often. Well, we have some pretty great weather coming up. Uh Coinciding with the holiday weekend, what more can you ask? That's so? right. So we're going to have a little thunderstorm activity, but it all ends before the holiday weekend. And Melanie, you're right. What else could we ask for? But a beautiful weekend to start the unofficial summer season. Joe Whitty is a weather forecasting veteran with more than 30 years experience. Unlike many of his colleagues, he's no skeptic about climate change. He believes the science is solid. But you also have to remember that people's beliefs in religion or politics or whatever oftentimes shade their, their thinking. And this is a very complicated problem, and so it's not easy to find answers to, and you have to sort of take time to do that. 
He's concerned about the impact that weather forecasters are having on the debate. Oh, absolutely, there's a flow through effect uh, because uh, we're in the communication business and people are looking for answers for a variety of different things and, and viewers are looking for answers about science. So we do have an effect on the population and probably on some of the decision makers who are making policy decisions and that those policy decisions are very, very hard decisions. Whilst there is division amongst weather forecasters, there is an even greater divide between forecasters and climate scientists. Why would anybody ask weather forecasters about their opinion of climate? I think it's because there's a hope that I don't think is justified that, that ordinary people will confuse weather forecasters with climate scientists. Professor Kerry Emanuel is disparaging about what he perceives to be a lack of knowledge amongst many meteorologists. Weather forecasters are in a unique position. I mean, if they actually did study the problem, if they, if they actually took the time to really understand it rather than just go to the blogosphere to get their favorite views and rebroadcast them, I think they, uh, they could do a lot of good in the world. And I think there are some who are doing that, to be fair. With the world seemingly experiencing more extreme weather, there's a view that presenting two sides of this debate actually distorts the argument. Ultimately, that treating this issue in a balanced manner gives the implicit um, impression that the scientists disagree and that there are as many scientists who don't believe in climate change as, as real as do. Um, in reality, it's, it's more like 97 to 3 in terms of the, the way the split falls out. Here are climatologists who have researched all this stuff in the past and they may research one thing or another thing and, and they're allowed to make a forecast about this event. Yet the guys that forecast constantly, no, stay out of it. <laughs> it's, am it's amazing how I don't, it, it, it sort of defies common sense. The split between climate scientists and meteorologists comes at a time when polls show that public skepticism about global warming is on the rise. We do those surveys of the public, and yes, we see um, the results that we've seen with weathercasters mirror almost perfectly the results that we see with the broader American general public, um, with a couple of exceptions. For example, weathercasters feel more knowledgeable about the issue than does the average member of the public. Um, yet, despite the fact that they feel more knowledgeable, they're not reaching different conclusions. So there's a lot of uncertainty with the computer models. Right now, the Mish Michaels is, is an Emmy Award-winning broadcast meteorologist. She represents yet another strand in the raging climate debate. Okay, Bunny. Let's do this one right here. There's a lot of apathy right as well because it does seem, uh, if in fact our globe yeah. is warming, that it's a larger problem than any of us can really tackle. She describes herself as a centrist and preaches the need for humans to adapt to the warming planet. If we are, in fact, manipulating Earth's climate in some way, this is part of Earth's history. <laughs> People landed here and here we are and, you know, it's part of Earth's evolution. And uh, I, I think that, you know, adaptation is our strongest suit. If that sounds like doing nothing about an inconvenient truth, then some climatologists say adapting technology may provide a solution. I really think that if we're going to be saved from this um, eventuality, it will probably be by technological advance. We'll figure out how to take the carbon out of uh, fossil fuels or we'll figure out something. People. I think people are rationally, and of course you don't spend the whole gross domestic product trying to combat anything, global warming or anything else. It's a question of risk assessment, isn't it? But for Joe Bastardi, the answer is simple. Just wait. Nothing to panic about, nothing to get upset about. It's just the weather, and you should enjoy the weather, because it's the only weather you've got.